In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic chart that's going to expand and contract based on user selection. This video is a part of my online Excel dashboard course. So if you're interested to find out more, check out the link in the descriptions below. What we have here is a set of prices by date for a certain stock. They go up to line one to seven. What I could do is to insert a line chart here based on this whole data set. But what I'd rather do is to have the user select what they want to see. So they're going to select the from date and the to date, and that chart is only going to show the prices that fall between these two dates. So that's our challenge. Basically, we're going to have a dynamic chart range. Normally, when I create charts, I have my raw data table, and then I have a data preparation table in between that prepares the data for the chart. But now, because that data preparation table needs to expand and contract, it's not going to be a good option. So what I'd rather do is to have my chart range update automatically. So to have that controlled directly in the chart. So to start off, let's just insert a line chart. I'm just going to pick a data, a sample data set from here and insert a line chart. Let's go and take a look at the series. So that's our values. Excel chart ranges, they want direct cell references. Either you have to give it in this way, or they also accept names from Name Manager. But what they don't like are formulas in here. So if we manage to come up with a formula that's going to give us those ranges for the date and the prices, we can't put it directly in here. But we can indirectly use them through Name Manager. So we're going to put those formulas and give them a name. And ultimately, we're going to use that name in here. Okay, so that's the way around it. Next challenge is, what is that formula going to be? How are we going to get one that's only going to select those ranges that the user selects here? I'm going to show you how to do this with the index function. If you're familiar with index and match, you know that it returns the value in a cell that you're looking up. So you index an area where you think your answer is, you use the match function to get the coordinates, how many rows and columns to move, and it returns the value in the cell. But if you use the index function before or after a column, like this column, like you know when you have ranges, like when you select A1 to A10, you get that column. If you use it before or after this, you don't get the value of the cell back. Instead, you get the address back. So you would get A4, for example, back. So that's the version that we're going to use to give us this dynamic range. So first off, let's make a bit, things a bit simpler for our users who are going to use this. Let's give them drop down lists. So let's insert a data validation list for the dates. Now, if I'm planning to add more dates to this, I'd be better off to turn this into an official Excel table. So whenever I add new dates, that this validation list is going to update automatically. And it's also good for formulas because once we make our formulas, those are also going to update automatically. But I'll keep it for now like this. And in the end, I'll change it into a table and we can see how it takes our new dates into account as well. So let's copy and paste this here. Now let's just pick one. That's the from and the two. Let's go with this one. So let's bring our date formatting on these as well. OK, so when the user makes the selection, we need to get back the cell references, right? So 211, that's sitting in A4. So what we want for dates is going to be A4 
2, 3, 2 is 16, so 2, A16. So that's the reference we want for the dates. And we want B2, B4 to B16 for the prices. So now we're going to use the index function to give us this in a dynamic way. It's going to be index to index. Okay, so the result of the first one should be A4 and the second one should be A16. So now let's go and see what arguments we have. One point though is that I'm writing it in the cell here first before I copy and paste it to Name Manager because in Name Manager I don't have, I don't get this help to see where in the argument I am. So it's much easier for me to write the formula here and once I know it works, I copy and paste it in Name Manager. First argument is array. Array means the area where your answer is. So my answer is going to be A4. So that's basically somewhere in column A. It's all I need to highlight and I have to fix it. The fixing is really, really important, especially when you're copying from here to Name Manager. Next argument is the row number argument. So now I'm going to match my from date and see where it falls on that list. That's what we're looking for. I have to fix it. Where am I looking this up? In here. Let's fix it. And we want a perfect match. Close, close. That should hopefully give us a four back. Now let's do the same thing for the end date. So we're going to index the same area that we had before. And we're going to fix, then we're going to match this one. I know I have to fix, I keep forgetting the fixing, but I'll make sure everything is fixed in the end. And zero. Okay, so let's just double check. This needs to be fixed. This is fixed. Okay, the rest looks good here. Let's press enter. Now we get an error. So that could be a real error, or it could just be the, re the fact that Excel can't put the result of so many cells in one cell. So let's hope it's that. I'm going to highlight this and press F9. This way I can see that that's the array. It looks good. I'll press escape to leave. Now I need to do the same thing for my prices. So I'm going to copy and paste this here and update the formula where it needs updating. So for the array argument, do I need to update this? Yes, because my answer should be B something. So it's going to be B4 to B16. So I need to change this to B and this to B as well and this as well. Do I need to change anything in the match? No, right? Because I'm still looking for this in here and looking for this in here. So my from and end dates are the same. So let's press enter. Now I do get a number, I get this number, but it's just putting the one number out of the whole array in here. It's again the same thing that you can't put all those numbers in one cell, but if I highlight this and press F9, I should see all of them. So I'm on the right track. The next step is to copy and paste this in Name Manager. So let's go to Formulas, Name Manager, and add a new name. So we're going to start with the date. I'll call it my date. And I'm going to paste that formula in here. Okay. When I click on it, I can see that it works. So let's go and copy this one, press escape to leave, go back to name manager, new, and I'm going to call it my value and paste the other one. And let's check. Looks good. Okay. Next step is bring these in the chart. So right mouse click select data and I'm going to replace these static names that I have here with my new name. So this is supposed to be the value. So that was my value. Now, 
Excel doesn't like it when you don't include the sheet name. So it needs that tab name in there before you put the name in it. So I have to put this back, the sheet one with the exclamation mark and then put my name and then it takes it. Now I have to do the same thing because I have to be in sync. I have to do the same thing for dates. So here I'm going to leave that sheet one and put my date here. Okay, so now it looks good. That's my starting date and that's my end date. Let's remove these. The real test comes now. Change to the 18th. That changed already. Let's change this to much higher. That looks good. That looks good as well. Okay, so that's how you can create dynamic ranges for your chart. Now, let's turn this into a data table because we're expecting to add more and more dates to this and see if everything updates automatically. So I'm going to press Control T on this data set. Let me go and remove the table design and go back to my own design. So I get this little icon, that's, my, that's where my table ends. Now let's just add some more dates to this. I'm going to put 93 and 91 here. And now let's check if those dates are included on our date list here. Let's go all the way down and there they are. That's the last date. And let's see if that number is included. That's 91. That's the one I just put in. Okay, so if you're adding more data, don't forget to turn your data set into an Excel table. So I hope you like this video. And if you like these type of videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get notifications when new videos like this one come out.